Hi, Hardscape Contractors. Ross Cossey here from the lovely, beautiful southeastern Pennsylvania today. It is a rainy, wet, cold day here. It's about 33 degrees, and you might see some snow in the background once in a while, but um, that's the way Hardscaper's life is some days. So welcome to Hardscape Thursday Tip of the Day. I wanted to do this because oftentimes we hardscapers are making sales calls, sales appointments in the winter time so we can get things lined up for spring. I know a lot of our schedules are already booked out for spring. Uh, ours is, and I'm not bragging about that, but we work hard on that objective. And I want to make sure that our sales pipeline is full and that we have, you know, a lot of activities once, I don't know, about mid-March around here hits, early March sometimes, but it really depends upon the weather. You poor guys in Florida and South Texas and Southern California never have to worry about that, I know. But around here in Pennsylvania, yeah, we do have to be concerned about the weather. So this Hardscape Thursday tip of the day is always is 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 about a sales call. I see a lot of posts about how do I make a sales presentation? What what do I do? Well, it all starts with the initial, you know, inquiry that comes in. That phone call, that email, could be a text, it could be a inquiry through social media, you know, a Facebook post. So, I know a lot of us get that type of thing. Um, most of mine come in through email nowadays. Sometimes they do trickle in by phone, but mainly it's through email. So, you know, once you've made that initial contact, once you have done the pre-qualification, which is always, always important, and many of you know me about, you know, how huge pre-qualifying is for me, and you may also know that uh, charging for these estimates is really important to me too, but that's another topic for another day. So this is all about how to make the sales presentation. It's that simple, it's not difficult. So uh, I do these, we do these a lot on rainy crappy days like this. It's just wet, it's cold, you know, we're, we're not able to work outside, we're not able to produce anything. So we make these sales calls on days like this. It really works well. It works well for us because uh, my guys are not spinning their wheels on evenings and weekends making sales calls when they could be with their families. I'd much rather my sales guy be with his family and not out on evenings and weekends. So. That being said, some of the essential elements when making a sales call is a tape measure, of course. We've got to measure. We've got to be able to scale things out and be able to determine what we're looking at. Another is a folder, so you can be somewhat organized. In that folder, you've got your business card, of course. You've got you know, some, some paper and you've got some pen you've got a pencil and a backup pen just in case myself i really like to sketch things out and to make notes when i'm out talking with the homeowner and being able to sketch and being able to draw is really an important aspect of a sales call and it doesn't have to be anything glorious anything to scale it's just the ability to get that, that vision from your mind's eye onto the paper. And you know, you'll get comfortable showing the the prospect that sketch that you've done. And it really indicates your ability to be able to transfer those thoughts that are in our heads onto paper and then ultimately out into a landscape or hardscape. That being said, um, 
you know, these are some of the important elements. Of course, you'll want to bring along a tablet so you can show off portfolio of your past work, uh, work that is before, during, and after. And I have found that people love to see during photos. You know, those, those photos where that backyard looks like the surface of the moon, where there's piles of dirt, where there's piles of stone, where there's cubes of pavers and wall material, and where everything looks like it's in chaos. It's really not. It's a well-organized logistical scene to us. But, you know, we can point out some of the various elements of it. So that's pretty cool to be able to do that. Uh, and, and, and one of the important elements for me too, and it might not be for you, and, and some of you will laugh about this, so let me set this down, is to wear a watch. Wear an old school watch. It will give the subtle indication that time is important to you. And, you know, the client's time is important. Our time is important. And we run things on a timely basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. I tell everyone I live and die by, by my schedule. And that's true. You know, we maintain a pretty tight schedule. Yeah, we do have to leave holes in our schedule for lovely days like this where it's just wet and rainy and can't do anything outside. It's basically a shop day. But time is important. And I really like to relay that to people so that they understand that we're not a typical contractor where time is not important and the client's time is not important. So wear a watch. It's pretty simple. The other rule that we have, and it's an in-house rule, uh, something I really strictly love to do, is to show up at that job site appointment, consultation, whatever you want to call it, five to ten minutes early. What's that old saying? On time is late and late is unacceptable. Well, that's true. When you knock on that door five minutes early, half the time they will be stunned and very pleased. And you'll leave a great first impression. And that's what it's all about, is making that great first impression. So, arrive five or ten minutes early. No, no more than ten minutes, because that would be rude. But arrive five or ten minutes early. And, <clears throat> excuse me, You'll be noted for that. And I know it's not always possible. I know things happen. Things happen to us too. Uh, traffic delays, weather delays, uh, job site delays. I get it. I totally understand that. When that happens, make that phone call. We have no excuse in this day and age of 2022 to not make a phone call to be able to say, hey, I am running late. I hit this traffic on route one and I'm gonna be just five or 10 minutes late. They will thank you for it. They will appreciate it. Um, everyone has run into that type of situation. But then when we show up late and unannounced, that's not cool. I've done it. I've made that mistake. I've lived to tell the tale. Not good. So. In summary, show up five or 10 minutes early. It's just, it's, it's out of respect. And lastly, look sharp. You don't have to go in a coat and tie or anything like that. I see these questions pop up all the time. You know, arrive in a logo jacket. You know, you're gonna have a hoodie on in this weather, turtleneck, whatever. Uh, jeans or, or Carhartt pants are fine. You know, look like a tradesman. That's great. This is what we do. You know, this is how we live. This is what we do. Oh, it's snowing out here now. I don't know if you can see, but it's snowing. <laughs> Rain to snow, one of those days. Welcome to Pennsylvania. So, arrive, look good, look sharp, wear a watch, be there five to 10 minutes early. You know, take paper and pad of, 
paper and pencil with you so you can sketch, so you can draw, so you can take notes and be able to take those notes back and be able to produce a quality quote, a proposal, whatever you want to call it. That will be in an upcoming video. So please, if you've gotten anything out of this video at all, subscribe below, like it if you did, and if you didn't, that's fine too. But let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any additions to this that you know would help others out in the comments below. So once again, Ross Causey here from lovely wintry southeastern Pennsylvania. Thanks for watching. Love to you all. And subscribe below, please. I'd like to grow this channel a little bit. And only with your help and assistance can we do that. So Ross out for now. Thanks for watching and have a great productive afternoon. Ta-ta for now.